Hey, Buff Nation, Voice of the Bus, Mark Johnson here. Coming up this week in the Buffalo Stampede as we come to you from Corelli's Rider Monday nights from 7 until 8 o'clock for Buffs Primetime. We meet our new defensive quarter for Coach Prime's football team, Robert Livingston. We're talking men's basketball with Javon Hadley, women's basketball with J.R. Payne. They've got a tough road trip ahead. And just before the men head to the L.A. schools, we'll connect with head coach Tad Boyle all this week in the Buffalo Stampede. Last year, we instill hope. Like, like, the, what I love about all of you is that when you came to that game, you truly believed that we were going to win that game. We truly believed that we were, we were going to win that game. We got our, butt kick, our butts kicked twice. Those other games, we were within seven to ten points, and we could have won. But we didn't have those guys that sitting over there now, or those guys that we just recruited, or those two wonderful coaches that's going to add so much to what we're doing and the whole mentality and the mindset and the understanding of what we want and what we need. We feel like we have that now. We've incorporated that now. We gotta, these, these guys, it's not a hope that they go pro. They know they're going pro. It's not a hope that they wanna protect Shador. They're gonna protect Shador. It's not a hope that we're gonna get to the quarterback. They're gonna get to the quarterback. It's not a hope that we're gonna make the right call on third down. We know we're gonna make the right call on third down. It's not a darn hope that we're gonna win. We know we're gonna win with what we brought. And we're gonna, my goal is, in my dream, you know that. I truly, you know I wanna win like crazy. And we're gonna win. But I really wanna get on a private jet and take Miss Peggy to a bowl game. That's it. There's Coach Prime at the National Signing Day event here at the University of Colorado. A lot of excitement around the football program, obviously. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Buffalo Stampede, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Here's a face you don't know yet. We've been waiting on the defensive coordinator announcement by Coach Prime. Robert Livingston comes in for the NFL from the Cincinnati Bengals. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Man. Your advice there. Yeah. yeah. Good, you, to, good uh, to see you. You've been in Cincinnati a long time. I have. Okay. Why have. finally take this job and leave the Bengals? Yeah, we were there 12, uh, 12 years. Okay. Super blessed to be there. I have a wife, four beautiful kids, and yeah. always said uh, right person, right place. So obviously you talked about Coach Prime, and as I drove in here today, uh, <laughs> I think I found both of them. So <laughs> super excited to get to work. Uh, got a chance to you know meet with some of the staff today, and, and they're great men. And, and uh, you see in their eyes just a passion for not only young men but for playing great football and that's our that's our goal is, is to put a great product out there for all the fans and you know I realize how lucky and fortunate I am I want to thank obviously coach prime and, mm -hmm. and the AD and the Regents and everything that goes along with that um, for giving me a chance and, and that's not lost on me now now you're from this part of the country Montana native uh, right? I would so I'm like a, a wannabe Montanian so I okay. grew up uh, I grew up in Western North Carolina okay um, Hendersonville beautiful town that's and, a long way from Montana that is but when I was five <laughs> I had an uncle who had a cattle ranch and, okay uh, I was cheap labor so uh, <laughs> from the time I was five until every summer since uh, okay. I spend time in Ovando Montana and if I'm going to the hotel tonight and I win the lottery I'll see you guys later <laughs> but I'll be in Ovando and uh, it. it's it's peace on earth for me it's 87 yeah. people it's, it's it's a phenomenal place and it was so great to have both a uh, great family in Hendersonville you know parents grandparents everything super supportive would not be here without those people and and then to kind of sneak away in the summer and and awesome. uh, get off the grid has been great for us well we'll catch you some part time Montana. And yeah, I think like <laughs> when you're not from there, you got to take whatever you can. Yeah. So it's been good. Do you have any history with Boulder? Had you been here? Had you coached a game uh, here at some point? Let's see, we've anywhere? played uh, in Denver, mm -hmm. uh, I want to say twice. Sure. Um, uh, we're one in one, so we got that right. going for us. Okay, nice. Um, Vance Joseph is, has been a mentor for me for, nice. for a long time. I worked with Vance in uh, 2014 and 2015. Um, and as it comes up, you know, you can overthink these things in this business like anything. Hey, VJ, I'm flying out to, to Boulder, you know, just a heads up. He said, look, if you get back on that plane, you're an idiot. Um, so <laughs> obviously super, super indebted to Vance. Um, Duke Tobin, a mentor of mine. Duke's uh, our director of player personnel in Cincinnati. Duke played yeah. quarterback here. And uh, the same thing, you know, as much as, you know, our relationship is great, I think he looks at it as the opportunity uh, to get back to a phenomenal place and and, uh, and really do some great things. So. Now, with the Bengals, by the way, he had a couple of buffs on that defense. Uh, Chita Bay Wouzier, John. Tupo on yeah. that team. You're familiar with the program through those guys. I am. I am. So uh, Cheeto is such a phenomenal guy, I think, yeah. as everybody knows. And uh, Cheeto was ACL rehab last offseason and uh, had to be in Cincinnati for an extended period of time. So he goes by Uncle Cheeto in my house now. Uh, <laughs> awesome. He's a, the ping pong coach for my, my kids. And 
Um, love Cheeto to death. Josh obviously plays a different position for us, but you know, Josh has, has been there about as long as I have. It yes. feels like you know, survived the purge and um, such a selfless, you know, do anything for the team guy. And I mean, you look up, but he's had a seven or eight year NFL career, which is is what everybody wants to do. So uh, two great guys for sure. Robert, like everybody else in football, yeah. you saw last year with with what Prime did with this program yeah, and the excitement. What was it about what you saw where you thought, I want to be part of that? Yeah, I mean, you know, so the TCU game is obviously the TCU game. Yep. And then the Nebraska game, I think we're going to we're going to Cleveland. So, mm -hmm. you know, normal kind of walking through the locker room when you look up, you're going to win again. Good yeah, for them. Yeah. And, you know, then that was the college game day with The Rock yep. and everything. And um, he's a Pied Piper, dude. Like, let's not lie yes, to each other. Like, yes. he's going he's gonna to bring everything that you want. And, uh, again, for me to be a small part of it and, and try to, you know, play great defense and play complimentary football, obviously with Coach Shermer coming from the NFL. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I've known Pat forever. Pat's son was on our practice squad for a couple of years in Cincinnati. So um, just excited. It's a, but it's that time of year, right? Everybody's everybody's going to win the national championship this time of year. Just go ask them, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so this is where it starts. This is where we got to get to work. We got to. I got to get to know the players, the staff, um, and we got to kind of come together. I think that's what every team has to do in the offseason is, is come together, unite, and, and know it's going to be a long road. There's going to be peaks. There's going to be valleys, like anything in life, right? Right, so uh, let's just get ready to work, and we're looking forward to it. Well, I can't wait to see it. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Great Thank having you so in the family. Thanks. Yeah, I look forward All to right. it. Robert Livingston, brand-new defensive coordinator for the Colorado Buffaloes. In the box, will hit the field against North Dakota State to open the season come September. Coming up next here to Stampede, we're talking a whole lot of basketball. Stay with us. Attack full court right. Hadley against Perez. Crosses over. Throws it high at the window. Nice little leaping grab by Hadley. Makes it right of the right short corner. Backs his way down against Green. Spins his way to paint. Pushes up. Hooks shot with the right hand. Price drives his way to paint. Shovels left side. KJ touches in the corner. Hadley for three. Right between the eyes from downtown. Well, after two weeks on the road, the Buffs were back home. Javon Hadley with his first career double double. 19 points, 11 rebounds. Buffs get a 12 point win over the Arizona State Sun Devils here at the event center. Back in the Stampede. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Number Number one joining us. Well, first off, it's good to be back home, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's wonderful being back home. Seems like forever. Yeah, it is. Yep, it's been a while. So yeah. I'm grateful for the fans and stuff like that. Yeah, nothing so, like the home cooking. Yeah. Uh, big ball game. I, I said afterward to Ted, it was kind of a workmanlike effort by you guys. Talk yeah. a little bit about the game and the win over some Sun Devils. Um, you know, playing against the Sun Devils is always a grind. You know, no matter where you play them, you know, home away, they're always going to be chippy. They're always going to foul you. They're always going to try to go block your side and, you know, just do all the little stuff like that. So, you know, you got to play smart, play physical, and uh, have a good mental. It's easy to get caught up in that style of play, yeah. isn't it? Right? Because yeah. they're, I mean, they're picking at you. They're, yeah. they're taunting. I mean, all the different little things you do. It's got to be irritating during the game. You got to keep your composure, correct? Yeah, you got to keep your composure, and you know, um, that's something that we've been uh, talking about all week. Um, you know, playing the Sun Devils, you got to keep your composure and just be. It, it comes with a level of maturity as well. Yeah. So just not getting into any of the little uh, fussy, you know, words and stuff like that. So just being mature. 19 points, 11 rebounds. That's a career high, by the way, in rebounds for you as well. Your, your game's been evolving, Jamar. I mean, last year you were such an important part of this team. Ted always talked about you being the glue guy, being the heart and soul. This year your, your game's evolving, isn't it? I mean, is it a confidence thing or what? Oh, uh, yeah, just doing what the team needs me to do. Yeah. You know, last year it was uh, inside presence, stuff like that more. And, you know, this this uh, this year we got, you know, Eddie Lampkin in there so I can, yeah. you know, step out to the, uh, the outside perimeter and do a little bit of more my game more. And, you know, shout out to my teammates for letting me uh, do that and be comfortable with me doing that. This team, as deep as it is, I mean, when you're out there, when we've got the full, you yeah. know, uh, number of guys out there, nobody's injured. We've had somebody injuries this season. When you've got KJ, though, doing what he does, Tristan, we know what he's all about. Cody comes in with a lot of ability. That just frees everybody up, though, because there's so many talented guys in the court, right? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, our offense is, you know, going to take care of itself every single night, you know. And if, if it's not, um, that's where we got to uh, step in on defense as well. Buffaloes get the 12-point win as they knock off Arizona State with Arizona up next on a Saturday night after the ASU win. We heard from head coach Tad Boyle. Presented by Coors Light. Coors Light, mountain cold refreshment, made to chill. Celebrate responsibly. Conference wins in February are like gold. Uh, they're, they're really valuable. And uh, our, our guys did a good job tonight. We didn't play our best offensively. Uh, we had a few breakdowns defensively, but we did what we had to do and uh, put away a really uh, competitive, hard playing Arizona State team. They they do not make it easy. You know they they play a very unusual style. They're they're physical. We talked all uh, week long about being strong with the basketball. Down at their place, the the points off turnovers was 27 for Arizona State, 12 for Colorado. Tonight, they had 12. 
you know, that, that was key because taking care of the ball against these guys uh, is, is, is important because they will come at you. You know, we had eight turnovers in the first half. Six of them were steals by Arizona State. So didn't think we did a great job there. We talked about it at halftime. Guys did a much better job in the second half. We had a stretch in the second half. We got nine straight stops. And I'm not exactly sure when it started, when it ended, but that's a heck of a heck of an accomplishment, you know, in, in conference play against a talented team. But uh, it was a good win. There's head coach Tad Boyles. The Buffs get the 12-point victory over Arizona State. Now sitting at 7-5 and five in Pac-12 conference play, 16-7. and seven. We continue with Javon Hadley. Had his first career double-double, 19 points, 11 rebounds. All right, the mask. How, how, does, that, how does that feel playing? Does it, does it hamper you at all? Are you feeling cumbered at all wearing that thing? How does it? Um, you know, there's a level of you know safety that I feel like playing with it. Actually, yeah. you know, I've got hit there a couple times this game. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm glad I did have it on. But you know, I always just want to have that um, that urge to just rip it off and stuff like that. So you know, I'm grateful for the mask, but you know, sometimes it is annoying. It's such a bizarre injury. I've said I've done the games here for the bus now for 20 years. I don't remember a guy having a facial fracture. Here we get a couple within about a week and a half. You and Cody have each got one. Yeah, I've, I've never been on a team with somebody with a mask, and you know, now we have two, like you said. So you know, it's interesting, and you know, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna stay positive with this. Well, are you are you sore? What what? Tell, where exactly did it happen? Oh, gonna... uh, my cheekbone right okay, here. Yeah. Um, so you know, I have some uh, fractures on this side, and then I. Have have a nasal bone on the other side so you know I got it on both sides um, somewhat yeah. um, but you know I don't know what all those doctors are talking about so you know I kind of just you know <laughs> tell them what I, uh, let them tell me what I need and you know I do yeah. it I listen well here's the thing you're still pretty though uh, yeah I so, appreciate that <laughs> I still don't have to worry about that <laughs> I appreciate right that. yeah he's still an attractive guy by the way Buffalo's now after this win against Arizona State 13 and 0 here at the event center first time Colorado has ever been 13 and 0 at home that's a, that's a matter of pride now for you guys. You want to make sure you run the table here and end up 17 and 0 at home, right? Oh yeah, no doubt. You know, Coach Art talks about having pride with the jersey. You know, we have, we have pride playing on this home court as well. Love it. Hey, keep up the good work. Appreciate you. All right, Javon Hadley, first career double level, 19 points, 11 rebounds. Buffs get a 12 point win over Arizona State. Coming up next in the Stampede, we're talking women's basketball. Sports Day. It's super fun because members from the community come out. It's also important to recognize the women in sports and just the part of being a female in this community and being an athlete at CU. It's just been a, an amazing experience and it's great to have the support from the community. The t-shirt Run Like a Girl, it's pretty empowering. It's great to be able to be in this sport where it's male, it's male dominated on the team and just be able to female and show other, other little girls out there that they can do this too. It resonates just because it's like you've got these big strong men and the women are here just to prove that we are also as strong and as capable as them and it's, it's great to show the community members, members of the school and children that they can also do this. It's great to be able to rep, represent CU. I'm freshly new to the team and this has been the best experience of my life and I'm so glad that I'm able to represent and basically become a part of the school. Well, it's always a great day at the Event Center, National Girls and Women's in Sports Day, surrounding the OSU game for the CU Women's Basketball Team. Back at a stampede out here at Corelli's. Monday nights from 7 until 8 o'clock. We're out here with head coach J.R. Payne and Tad Boyle, always a player guest. Back at a stampede, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. It was a split for the CU women. They won on Friday big over Oregon and then lost for the second time this season as they fell on Sunday with a massive comeback in that ball game, but still fell to the Beavers of Oregon State. And we were at Corelli's talking with head coach J.R. Payne about that game. Game. Powered by Ford, cars, trucks, and SUVs built for America. Built Ford proud. A heck of a dominating win over Oregon on, on Friday. And then yeah. uh, that was a heck of a comeback you had yesterday. <laughs> Thank now, I know you. you don't want to dig that kind of hole. but Right, uh, wow. right, yeah. You know, it's one of those games where you think, man, if we just had one more minute, right. you know, we, we probably would have pulled it off. But like you said, you can't dig a hole like that yeah. against such a good team. What, what, what do you take away from that game? Um, oh boy. Um, I mean, there's lots to take away. One, um, we didn't execute game plan as effectively as we needed to, you know, too yeah. many open looks to a team that spaces you out with, you know, an all American center and four shooters and, you know, but we didn't get in and out of spaces quick enough, you know, to contest shots. Um, that's sort of the basketball part of it. The, the emotional part of it is no matter what, no matter where, no matter who, you got to be ready, yeah. you know, and then, um, just that we can come back, like never stop, never stop fighting always stay united, stay together, and, and we can do whatever we want to do on the court. You know, doing this as long as I have, you see 
matchups that are, that are good matchups and tougher match. Yeah. Is OSU a, a, a tough matchup for I your mean, team? I mean, I guess so. We've lost yeah. to them twice. We've only right. lost a few games all year, and two of them have been to them. You know, on paper, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I mean, they're bigger than us at, at a lot of positions. Um, but I think, you know, I would take, like, our player against their player head-to-head. -head, but – um, you know, it is tough because cause the, the gal they play in the center is, is truly an All-American. She's very, very good. Um, and then they have four kids that can really shoot it. And right. so it's just, yeah, it's just hard. you got to get in and out of spaces quickly. And, and um, you know, their best shooter, 6'3". And so we match up with our, you know, four player usually. And, and that's not a normal matchup, you know, for a post player to get out and guard shooters like that. And so that's tough. Um, yeah, I thought we did a great job on the glass. We're the, the only second team in the country, or second team that they've played that's out rebounded them. Right. You know, and so there were some things certainly that were good, and you know that we'll take away and and be happy about. But really, really disappointed that we lost. You, you've got a limited sample size, but how does this team respond to a loss? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a veteran enough group. You know, we've really the few times that we have lost, we've tried to be very intentional about studying the film. What what did we not do effectively? Where do we fix it? How do we fix it? Move on. Fix it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I think we'll do that, certainly. I mean, you watch the film. We always watch highlights and lowlights. And, you know, I think you learn from the highs just as much as you can sure. learn from the lows. And so um, really trying to figure out what didn't go the way we wanted it to, why didn't it go the way we wanted it to, um, and then what are we going to do differently next time out. Friday against uh, Oregon, you had 32 assists in a game. In a, in a college game. I know. That is a silly number. It is silly. Yeah, those yeah. are like video game numbers. Right. When I went over after and saw the stat sheet, I just went, you know, my mouth <laughs> dropped like to my to my knees. Um, I've never seen that in, yeah. in all my years. 32 assists on 36 field goals, um, but it was a tremendous night. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's just I think it, it illustrates the selflessness of this team yeah. a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and I don't remember the numbers, you know, off the top of my head, but I think almost every single player that played had an assist. Um, you know, everybody scored, everybody, you know, had rebounds. But, um, yeah, truly unselfish. Um, one thing I love about our team and our veteran point guards is they do a great job of figuring out who has the hot hand. And, and we don't force it, but we really – try to get the ball back to that person. You know, obviously sure. Maddie Nolan was that person, you know, 14 points in the second quarter alone, um, you know, and hit the, the uh, Jalen penetrated, found her for an, a shot right at the buzzer at halftime. You know, just really, really smart basketball, I thought, that night. Now, you are uh, amongst a four-game stretch right here that's got to be about as tough as anybody sees in the country. So you just yeah. played number 17. Yep. You've got numbers at 22. 22, and then, yep. what, 9, nine and 10. 10 coming up. Yep. All uh, on the road. All, all on the road. Three in a row. Yeah, three straight in the road. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, two week, you know, two weeks ago we played four straight on the road and, you know, tough environments, and, and we came out pretty well. So we just got to stay focused one day at a time. There's head coach J.R. Payne. They come off the split with the Oregon teams. Now they're on the road. They got three straight against top 25 teams beginning on Friday night at number 22, Utah. As we continue here at Corrales, we'll take a time out to Stampede. Back next, we're going to talk with head coach Tad Boyle of the men's team. Ryder Sarchette is there. United States of America with Ryder Sarchette from Sun Valley, Idaho takes gold with a brilliant second run. The celebrations today belong to the United States of America. Ryder Sarchette with a brilliant performance to claim gold for the USA. How about that right there? One of our great buff skiers winning a World Junior Championship in France. Now the uh, buff skiing team, by the way, getting ready for the RMISA Championships coming up here very shortly. Back in the bubble stampede, voice of the boss, Mark Johnson, out here at Corelli's Monday nights from 7 until 8 o'clock for buffs prime time. And we're hooking up with head coach Tad Boyle as they get set to go on the road against the L.A. schools. Well, a split uh, against the Arizona schools. Uh, yeah. You feel good on Thursday, not so bad on Saturday, but... Uh, Give us your thoughts about the weekend. Yeah, I mean, obviously the Thursday game it was a good good win against a team that we lost to down in Tempe a few weeks earlier, and and I thought we played really well. Uh, not perfect by any means, but uh, found a way to win. And and uh, and obviously we knew we were going to have our hands full on Saturday. And uh, I always feel like on these splits, Mark, I, I I'd, I'd rather play the team that you your players are going to be like the most juiced for. Sure. You, you want them on the back end. Yes. Because. You, I mean, not again. Not that Arizona State's not capable. They are. They, they beat us in Tempe, but, but uh, I, you know, it's one of those deals where you know you don't have to say much to get them ready to play Arizona. Right. Uh, and and they were ready to play against Arizona State as well. But uh, so it kind of set up nicely for us. 
Uh, we got the win on Thursday, but then on Saturday, you know, we knew we had to play well. And uh, I, I really believe this. And I, I would say in my 30-year coaching career, uh, there's probably I, – I could have, you know, 10 opportunities where after the game you go in the locker room with your team and, you, and you're like, okay – not that we couldn't have beat that team, but, like, they were better than us tonight. And no matter – I don't want to say no matter what we did, but, like, we would have had to play a near-perfect game to to beat Arizona that night because they played that good. I, I felt agree. like they were terrific. They made shots. They were physical. They um, they rebounded the ball. I'm like, they just so much stuff. And, and there's so many times as a coach, uh, as a player, and certainly as a fan, you're so dialed into your team, okay, what did we not do well? What could have we done better? And certainly, we look at those those things. You don't you don't stop doing that. But uh, again, I'd say I'd you know if I counted on on both hands in my thirty year career, I'd have a few fingers left, but not many. Where I went in the locker room and said, "Hey guys, they were they were better than us tonight, yeah. and and uh, we got to move on." Now we got to look at what we could have done better. Um, but uh, Arizona was really good. I mean, they, they could have beaten some NBA teams on Saturday night. They I really were hit big that. shots. They yeah. made shots. Yeah. They made tough shots. They made uh, – and we, we – look, we broke down at times. We didn't we didn't box out well enough. We didn't uh, uh, guard well enough. Obviously, you know – Turnovers were an issue. Turnovers were an issue, which has been a, a kind of a bugaboo for this team all year long. But, you know, I mentioned to you when we went to Utah – Inside the three-point line, we shot 37% as a team. It was really a – we really had trouble putting the ball in the basket. Last night, you know, we shot 57% inside the arc uh, against on Saturday night against Arizona, which is a yeah, phenomenal number. Big we shot we shot 29%, unfortunately, from three. The three-ball three ball, uh, wasn't going in. It had some good looks. So some nights it, it, it is like that. But, you know, we scored 79 points. We got to the foul line. We made our free throws. We just – we weren't good enough defensively, and, and, and they were a big reason for that. Yeah, you rebounded relatively well. I mean, you had not yeah, offensively. Yeah, we were a minus yourself, two. But, and, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, well, those 16 enough. turnovers. When you, when, yeah. uh, you and I talked afterward as well. 16 turnovers. They had 23 points and points yep. off turnovers. Exactly. 23 yeah. points off turnovers and 23 second chance Second points. chance. Yeah. So that's 46 points of their 99. If we box out and take care of the ball, not that you're going to make those numbers zero, yeah. But if you cut the twenty, the forty-six and a half. Well, to counter, they they had you know. your your totals are seventeen, so that's plus nineteen in their favor. Yeah. You lose by twenty. Yeah. There's head coach Tad Boyle as we wrap up the Bubble Stampede this week. As we're out here at Corelli's of Boulder Monday nights from seven until eight o'clock this week. The CU men on the road against the LA schools Thursday night. We're going to be in Westwood. Buffs will take on the UCLA Bruins at seven o'clock. We're going to hit the air at six thirty with the Buffs warm-up pregame show. Again, that wraps up this week's Bubble Stampede. I'm Boyce the Bus, Mark Johnson. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.